Hello and welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Pogue County. I'm your host, Yasmin Ali. The temperatures are finally starting to cool down and it's a great time to take advantage of the weather by engaging in outdoor activities. Last month, Polk State College held their annual Fall Fest, a community tradition that's been going strong for more than 30 years. The free event features various arts and crafts vendors, music, and food, and all of the proceeds benefit students through the Polk State College Foundation. Check this out to learn more about Fall Fest and meet a couple of artists from the event. This is our 32nd year of Fall Fest here at the Polk State College on the Winter Haven campus. It started out very small and it has grown now to over 130 vendors. And last year we had probably between four and 5,000 um, people come to visit us here. Um, it started out many years ago as um, a fundraiser for our college um, clubs and organizations. Um, and we open it up to the community so they can have exposure here to our campus and see what we do. Okay. We have um, probably over 25 clubs and orgs here and this is their biggest fundraiser. They have an opportunity to um, sell things or have uh, activities for kids and this is their biggest fundraiser of the year. We have our athletics department and they are always in charge of the food so they do hamburgers and hot dogs. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big fundraiser, a money maker for them. Um, our vendors fees um, each year they go toward um, our uh, the foundation for our students everything that we take in will go straight to our foundation to benefit the students so the visitors coming to fall fest they're going to find all kinds of arts and crafts anything from baskets to ornaments to um, anything to do with their dogs we have a lot of uh, pet pet vendors that have leashes and um, little pet clothes and stuff. We also have a lot of vendors that are um, selling woodwork this year. We do have a lot of artists here and we, and we give them the opportunity to, um, to promote what they do. We also, in our, in our theater lobby, we have our art club that has their art that they've been working on throughout the year for sale. Um, all of our artisans here, they um, come back year after year. We have so many people that have been here for 29, 30 years, anywhere from maybe five years. We have, like I said, I think we have 30 new vendors this year. This is their first time and it's all been by word of mouth. They've been calling me wanting to get in because they've heard about it from somebody else. So a lot of word by word of mouth and um, it's growing. It's definitely growing each year. Yes, there is a selection process. They have to send in to the Fall Fest committee at least three pictures of what they're going to sell and a little description. The committee will look at it and will, you know, will um, approve them or not. We do not take anything that is um, like mass merchandise or commercially produced or any type flea market type. We want this to be, um, you know, a, f a festival that um, is all handmade and homemade. So we keep in constant contact. We start in July starting to open up the registration for Fall Fest and it goes through pretty much to October and I'll, I'll close the registration in October. And that gives us an opportunity to get all the vendor numbers straightened out and all the new vendors situated. <laughs> The name of my business is Simply Adorables. I do silk florals, uh, fall and Christmas mostly, but I will do year round. My son passed away and I had just gotten interested in uh, creating silk florals. And it actually kind of saved me a little bit. I would have lost my mind, I think. I, I, dis I uh, retired from Suncoast Credit Union uh, in December 2016. My job was ATM Senior Support Specialist. I went from taking care of a lot of ATMs to floral arranging and I love it. I love it. But um, mostly I just like doing custom designs, one of a kind. I get bored doing the same one over and over so I, I'm really into the one of a kind. Um, the reason I do this show, it's my best show of the year actually, 
Um, I usually sell out by about 1.30. There's a lot of people that come here. Um, they're in the mood, but the, the timing for this show is perfect for people that are looking to get fall right away. It's a great show, plenty of good food, a lot of great vendors. The quality here is excellent. Um, you need to come out and take a look. I'm sure there's something here you'll find you like. The only thing I can say is jump in. Just, just find something you like to do and jump into it. And if you succeed at it, all the better. Same as playing sports. Find a sport you like. Don't play one that you're not good at. Play one you're good at. Okay, at the Fall Fest, I do the Nautical Mermaid bouquets. Um, I also have a few Christmas things because I like to do Christmas. I do the princess dresses and I do sell them year round. And then I do the 18 inch doll clothes for the American Girl or the My Generation dolls. So I kind of do a mixture of things. I enjoy doing them. It's a fun activity for me. And nice way, nice way to meet people. <laughs> Originally, I owned a flower shop for 16 years, and then I did craft shows too, just because it's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy the fact that people enjoy what I do. I, I appreciate the fact that it's 100% American made, that it's something I create. Everything's one of a kind. I don't duplicate anything. Um, and I think people are looking for that. I think they like the fact that, I, I don't want to knock a big box store, but you know, same old, same old. I like the fact that I can create different things that you're not going to see elsewhere. This particular show is just kind of beginning the season. Uh, a lot of people are looking, maybe not buying a lot, but maybe just looking. But I use it as a sales tool for future shows in the area. I always do very well. I don't have anything to complain about. I think it's good, it's a good activity, it's a good location. I think it's good for the student body to help participate. Gives them an opportunity to see what they can do with their, and I like being out the, outside the art center because you meet other creative people that, you know. And I think sometimes people don't realize how talented or creative they are. I, I think that you need to be your own person. I think you need to be your own entrepreneur, you need to learn how to do things and, uh, you know, God makes us all different for a reason. You know, we're blessed with different activities. Some people sing, some dance, some create. Originally, I'm from California, um, Monterey, but today uh, brings me here. I'm an artist, so I try to stay at venues where I can um, enhance on my talent. You know, uh, make a living off doing what I love. It's it's really worth it at the end of the day. Um, the kind of art that I make is a reflection of um, the art that I haven't seen that I've always wanted to see. So it just comes from the soul. I love beautiful, really beautiful things and things that are good for, um, that have deep meanings. Um, so far I'm loving it. I love, the, I love the people that are here. I love everybody else that's going on. It's just got a, it's got a good vibe and I know it's fun. I like it. To get your name out there and to just speak to people and it's really a invaluable asset. It's a great venue and clientele. I just think it's great for furthering you um, as a person. I love mermaids and I've never seen them of African descent or of, you know, of color. And I just thought, wow, I'm just gonna create them myself. So they actually are 54 of them, each country in Africa. And to represent just the diversity and the power and the beauty of a continent that's not shown with this type of, uh, what should I say, enigma, a mermaid, you know, they're always shown a certain type of way and I just wanted to see it represented in another kind of way, so.
A lot of people say, you know, they can't draw this and that, but I mean, people have sold $5,000 splat paintings. I say, let just live through your soul. Don't be, get out of your head and get into your heart a little more. It sounds risky, but um, it's, it's, a, it's so worth it. You'll feel better in the end. This year's Fall Fest was a blast, but if you missed it, don't worry, it's usually held on the third Saturday of October, rain or shine. Keep up with all of Polk State College's events by visiting polk.edu slash events. If you've walked through Fort Blunt Park recently, you might have noticed the remnants of Bartow's first ever Chalk Walk Festival. Ordinary sidewalks transformed into canvases that came alive with color, vibrancy, and energy. Check this out to learn more about Bartow's first ever chalk walk and the unique performance art of street painting. Uh, so Bartow Chalk Walk is a family-friendly event. We have 25 professional chalk artists that travel all over the world. And we wanted to bring this experience into downtown Bartow because there's a lot of learning and you could experience the art in a different way. So when you see a chalk drawing, everybody has a different style, has a different method of how they approach situations. And so as patrons come over, they could talk and interact with the artists. If they have art interests, then they can talk about how lighting affects the image or you know why this particular image. And it's a very interactive uh, medium. It's different than going to a gallery. It's different than going to uh, shows where you just see the finished piece of art so this is something that you can uh, see the evolving process of. I had visited um, Florence, Italy uh, about six years ago and that's where Chalk Walk was born in the 1600s of street painters painting the Madonna uh, on the streets and so I was very enthralled by that and that kind of uh, stood out in my mind. Cass uh, led us down the road of uh, producing chalk events and she was the one that got the artist uh, she had that connection and then I was on the end of producing the event so that's how that came about kind of cool and a year later we had it well anybody can be a chalk artist and when I say professional it's just artists that um, come out and do these shows regularly throughout the year and we're one giant big family I, we know each other you know, everywhere, uh, California, Mexico, Italy, and we all communicate. It's a big group of us. But what I mean by temporary, when the chalk, you know, it comes and goes, it's, a, it's like a performance art. It's like a music performance. It's like, um, you know, you go to a concert, you just hear it then, and then you take home what you remember. With this, you sometimes get a photo, but it's really the interaction between the artist and the guest or whoever comes out. And so, while yes, it's temporary, and we are sad to see it go sometimes, if it didn't leave, we couldn't come back and recreate that experience. The chalk art world, it's a chalk art community of dedicated artists that want to share the passion of street painting. And um, ours happen to be on a sidewalk in Fort Blunt Park, but often they are on the streets and um, that's why it's called street painting. But it's a beautiful art form. It's done with uh, pastels. Pastels are highly pigmented um, chalk and they uh, allow for beautiful and easy blending and vibrant colors. And so uh, it's just a phenomenal art form that I'm so glad that I'm introduced to now that I'm toying in my brain. Should I even try to do that myself as an artist? But uh, I'm not sure about that. But the sad thing about it is it is considered a performance art. And what that means is they're actually creating this art in two days. And with our chalk event, oh, it was awful. At 4.30, I took a load of um, stuff uh, from the event to my storage. And when I came back, it had rained and it started to wash it away. And I was heartbroken that there was a swirl of pastel puddles uh, that the artwork was diminishing. And it, it's just, and I was like, no, we've got to save the work. We've got to save it. And Cass, the artist said, no, it's a performance art. That's part of it. And she goes, we call that the the chalk hangover afterwards. Because uh, as an artist, you create through the love of your heart and what you're doing, and it is hard to see it go. But in this instance, they've had to create it, love it, and then let it go and disconnect. Uh, I've done art pieces where I don't even want to sell them because I don't want to let them go. That's how sometimes you get attached. But 
Um, so uh, that's an interesting aspect of the, the art form that uh, is kind of tough for me. I'll have to get used to that. I don't know that I will, but. Well, the way you get to keep it is through the photography. And um, we had a great um, uh, professional photographer there. Uh, and he captured the images on a ladder and with a stick so he could get directly over it. Uh, and um, you just have to capture it through the pictures. Some of my favorites, well, almost all of them were favorites, but um, it is great to be able to keep them through photography. Uh, we really like towns like Bartow because it gives a very local feel. Um, we like having the courthouse and the Polk County History Center right behind us and we really support local businesses. We try to um, not only uh, pray tribute or be patrons of the local business and highlight them on our social medias and everything just because we really believe in that local downtown feel. It ended up being uh, hugely successful and people really enjoyed it. They were just as surprised about it as we were. So um, it will be next October the 5th and 6th, um, unless something changes. It actually kicks off the, the fall chalk, chalk art season. Uh, right after our weekend was Marietta, Georgia. Uh, this weekend is Clearwater. I'm not sure where it is further, but there's a fall season and a spring season. So um, one of the largest chalk festivals in the country is uh, Lake Worth down south. And I went to that last year to do homework and they had over 600 chalk artists. Uh, we had um, 19, we had 22, but a couple had to cancel at the last minute. And that's a great effort for a first time event for the size of our city. So, um, and we had, uh, you can't do these events without sponsors because we actually support the artists through a stipend and we feed them and, and you know, they're here traveling uh, on their own expense and so we want to take care of them so that they can share uh, what they're doing and their passion and their art. So our sponsors are really important this year. It was Frost Vandenboom who was our presenting sponsor and then uh, Patel Green and Associates who was a, a lower level sponsor, but we appreciate them and we'll be looking for more sponsors next year. So if you want to sponsor this event, let us know. So the Florida Chalk Art Society or Association, um, we have a website, it's uh, floridachalkartists.org. And on there we have a list of events that we travel all over the state of Florida. Uh, in a couple of weeks we'll be in Clearwater. And on that social media and on our Facebook page, uh, we'll post where the next events come up. And if anybody wants to get involved, all they have to do is see where the events are and come on out and talk with us. To learn more about chalk art and street painting, visit www.floridachalkartist.org. And you can keep up with all of Bartow's fun events by visiting MainStreetBartowFL.com. Our last segment of the month features a relatively new group to the Polk County art scene. The Florida Philharmonia Orchestra is a volunteer organization of musicians with varying abilities who strive to share their love and passion for music with the community. They recently held their first concert of the season, which featured works by Haydn, Strauss, and Rimsky-Korsakov, among others. Check this out to learn more about the Florida Phil and the rest of their upcoming season. group that formed the Florida Philharmonia Orchestra were former members of the ISO. Uh, the ISO did change directions about two years ago and this core group just found that that change format was not going to meet their their lifestyle. However we still felt there was a need for a volunteer orchestra within Polk County Lakeland community. So we said okay well um, Let's give it a try. So we did, and here we are going strong, going into our third season, to playing to standing room audiences, and uh, audiences and musicians alike, very enthusiastic, enjoying every minute of it. This is a really neat organization. Um, one of, the, one of the very special things about it is that everybody is here, everybody who is here is here because 
they want to be. I mean, they, they volunteer their time, not only for the rehearsals that we do every week, um, but there's all the practice time outside of rehearsal as well and preparations. So the folks who are a part of this orchestra um, really are giving of themselves um, to be a part of it and also to share their music with, with everybody else. They, they do it out of a love for music, um, a love for their instrument, a love of sharing that music with others. So uh, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very special uh, group of people and a very special group. We basically have about 50 musicians. Uh, they're largely from Polk County itself. And we're talking about the far reaching edges of Polk County as far away as Davenport and Lake Wales. We do have people outside Polk County that would include uh, Brandon, Valrico, Claremont. So they do come from some distance, giving up again time and uh, family time to, to be a part of us. Um, I started playing in third grade. Um, my family is a background of pastors. So we've all been, they all are singers. I can't sing a tune to save my soul, so I was given a flute. And I picked it up and I've been playing ever since. You get to play the fun parts. You get to do the trills. You get to do the runs. We get to sit up front. You know, it's, it's a fun thing. The flute players, we are a bunch of nutty people. <laughs> we are. So it's fun to be around other flute players. I love the music. You know, I love being the one that gets to play all the trills and the runs. You know, it's not always just the, the melody, it's the fun things that people remember. I play trumpet. I also play um, most of the brass instruments with valves, and I even play a little bit of trombone. I've been playing since I was 11 years old, which means I've been playing 61 years. And, um, it started in junior high band. We all spend a lot of time behind the scenes with the music, setting up, and that's all. That's all. That's that's a labor of love, particularly for the musicians. And we love to be to do what we're doing. A lot of people have never experienced classical music or like classical um, anything other than what you hear on the radio. Once they hear it, say. Wow, what is that? And especially when, when you work, play with, play program pieces which uh, try to illustrate something else, like illustrate a painting or maybe illustrate a mood, such as nationalism. I mean, look at music, uh, the military music. I mean, it's, it, it, it invokes the spirit of let's get together and let's solve the problem. That's what it is. It can evoke a number of emotions. And live music, yeah. That's what it really is all about, live music. There is a place for every type of music, every genre of music. But classical music has a depth to it um, that, quite honestly, you don't often find in other, in other forms. Um, the, the composers that are played in classical music, they're new composers as well as old composers. You think of the older composers who, Bach, you know, 300 years. Um, and. Uh, you know, his music has stood the test of time and really encouraged people, um, helped people in times of distress, helped them to express things that they couldn't express otherwise. So, and in a live setting, recordings are great. I mean, YouTube is great. <laughs> and to be able to hear pieces of music uh, in that kind of setting is a, is a wonderful thing, but there is something dynamic about the live setting that you just do not get otherwise. And there's that camaraderie between you and the orchestra, if you're an audience member. It's a, for the orchestra members as well, you know, there's a connection that, that we make with, with the audience. Um, so there's that kind, of, that kind of dynamic that takes place. And there's an energy um, that happens in a live performance that you just, no matter how good your sound engineers are, uh, you just can't, you can't capture that on a recording. So. Uh, this orchestra is really cool in that it provides people an opportunity to listen to classical music. Um, our concerts are free and open to the public, so anybody can come. And uh, we've been very, very thankful. I can't remember a concert where we haven't had pretty much a full house. 
So, uh, you know, the community has really shown a lot of appreciation for the musicians and having this opportunity to be able to hear the music live. It means something special. I haven't missed a practice yet. To me, this is something that's important and I love to play. I've always wanted to play with an orchestra. And I love the, the family members. We're a family here. We come together, we are, we are united. You know, none of us are perfect, but we all have a background that we can't always devote 100% and everybody knows that. So it's easy to come and just practice and we all leave energized and relaxed each time. So I am so grateful that these people have given me a chance to just show what I can do and contribute. I wanted to be a music teacher and to study classical music and I was able to go to Polk State and start that. Um, and then that's how these doors opened for me to join here and it's just been, it's, it's my doorway out of the world. You know, I'm a manager of a restaurant. So, and that's stressful. So for me to come once a week and play and relax, I leave here wide awake and energized. You know, this, this Philharmonia means a lot to me. You know, I love the people in it. I love the audience. You know, I love the music. It's always something that I've wanted to do. Um, these are your neighbors. These are people that you work with. Uh, we have, we've got some high school students, we have college students, we have professionals, some of whom are, are music educators. Others um, have various occupations, health care, um, you name it, we've got those kind of folks, you know, from every kind of walk of life that are part of the orchestra. And we have folks who are retired, so we're really covering, covering the gamut age-wise and um, occupation-wise. The workaday world can be pretty gruesome sometimes, and you can get pretty worn out and pretty tired and you can get pretty drained emotionally. And uh, a concert like this is a real cool opportunity for you to sit and be refreshed and to hear some music that will really impact you at the core of your being. We have four concerts a year. We have a classical concert, we have a pop concert, we have a jazz concert, and we have a Christmas concert. So if you don't like classical and you like jazz, come to the jazz concert. You know, if everybody loves Christmas music, so please come to the Christmas concert. It's fun, it's relaxing, everybody loves it, it brings you the Christmas cheer. You know, there's a pop concert, you know, people who like Star Wars music. It's so, it's so much fun. And it's something fun for the kids to do. You know, it's something to come out with the family or if you just want to have a date night and something to do, it's free. We don't charge nothing. So only thing we ask for is donations just to help with to buy music for the next season and instruments to expand. We're only three seasons in and I hope to be 30 more. For more information on the Florida Philharmonia Orchestra, visit www.floridaphilharmonia.org. Their next concert will be held on December 4th at the College Heights United Methodist Church in Lakeland and will feature Christmas music to help you get in the holiday spirit. Well, that's all I have for this month, but there's always plenty going on within the Polk County art scene. Stay tuned for a list of art events in your area. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time for more art out and about.